wish I'd have heard God, listened to God, and obeyed God. And as he plunged to the depths, water, water temperatures, cooling and cold and freezing, I would imagine that he thought his life was gone. And about that time, God sent his underwater taxi service to pick him up. And this big fish took Jonah. And in his belly there for three days, Jonah, you can see in chapter 2, had some serious times of prayer. So he was convinced that now he was ready, and the fish was getting really tired of Jonah, so he just spit this guy out on the shore. And when Nineveh came to mind, Jonah was ready to go. And so he headed to Jonah because he wanted to preach to them. God says, because there are wicked people. Now understand, Jonah and many of the people of this day hated. I'm talking about hated as in loathed. They despised. They would pour a glass of water on them if they were on fire. They did not like the Ninevites. They were arrogant. They were cocky. They had all the stuff. They had all the amenities that would be possibly afforded that day. They just simply blasphemed the name of the God. They, they simply turned their backs in his face. And it was just simply a place that you would rather blow up than see them repent. So you got to understand, Nineveh is not a place Jonah wants to go, but now he's ready. He's got turned around. He goes and he preaches and he calls for repentance. And guess what? The people repent. I mean, even in the even the head dudes, the mayor, and everybody else, they everyone repented. And, and God, at that point, said, "You know, I will, I will repent. I will change my desire to destroy them because of the wickedness of their ways, because they have now repented and turned to me." Now, you would think this would have been awesome, right? These people who hated Jonah's God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Now they've repented. They turned. He thought it would be a happy day. Look what the prophet Jonah did. But as we see, and if you know the book, then you know that Jonah wasn't happy. I mean, deep inside, he had something deep in his dirt driving him what he did, what he said, what he thought. And even though he saw the country of repentance in his heart, he was hoping they would not repent and God would send a great something or another and wipe them off the earth. And God did not. Later on in chapter 4, we, we see an interesting dialogue between Jonah and God. And, uh, and we'll get to those things here in just a minute. But what was his bag? All this Jonah's stuff. Well, some things we know, just, just by observation, we'll take a look at them again. By observation, we know that he was disobedient. He did that from the very start. He was to go to Nineveh, he went to Tarshish, that's not the right direction. We know that he was also disappointed. He was disappointed in God, and later he would be disappointed in himself, because he would feel as a fail, feel himself as a failure. A failure in the sense that he did not accomplish what he wanted to do because Jonah never got the idea that this whole thing was about God and not Jonah. Jonah thought it was about him. After all, he was the prophet. So he was disobedient, disappointed. He felt abandoned. Jonah was incredibly prejudiced. He was prejudiced against other people. And even though these people were heathens, what he did not know was that God is still at work among the heathens, whether Jonah wanted it or not. Because it's the heathens, those who aren't a part of God's family, that God wants to be, wants them to be a part. So Jonah had it all backwards. He thought this was a Jonah thing, but it was a God thing. He was incredibly prejudiced. About people. And then I think, finally, I think he just had some unmet expectations. He had the expectations of, of himself, of God, 
And a lot of times when people have unmet expectations, uh, that kind of kind of tunnels down into a very uh, incredibly powerfully root that we're going to talk about in just a minute. But to give you a little bit of the closing of how this little pity party that Jonah had at the end, I want to read chapter 4. If you turn to chapter 4 and begin in verse 4, we pick up on the end of the story. Chapter 4, verse 4. But the Lord replied, Have you any right to be angry? John went and sat in a place east of the city. There he made himself a shelter. Sat in its shade and waited to see what would happen in the city. I mean, he's still waiting for it to blow up. He said, you know, they repented. Surely God's going to do something. He went up there to see what would happen in the city. And nothing did. There, then God provided a vine and made it grow up over Jonah to give him shade for his head to ease his discomfort. And Jonah was very happy about the vine. But at dawn the next day, God provided a worm which chewed the vine so that it withered. When the sun rose, God provided a scorching east heat uh, wind. And it's hot. <laughs> you got to get this. This is adding insult to injury. God is thinking in his dirt. He brings up a shade. He takes it away. Not only does he take it away, he makes it a hot day. And it's blistering, it's blistering hot. So God's messing with Jonah in a serious, serious way. So when the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind, and the sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. He wanted to die and said, It would be better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, Do you have a right to be angry about the vine? And Jonah said, I do, in his pompous piosity. I do, he said. I am angry even enough to die. This is good. This is really a poop party. But the Lord said, you have been concerned about this vine, though you did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. But Nineveh has more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left and have many cattle as well. And God concludes by saying, should I not be concerned about that great city? 